We pick up from where we left things off between our hero Volts and the slave girl Phi, who wants him to become her new master. She tells our hero that she does not like to work at all, and she likes how slaves can just get food and shelter without having to do anything. She presents herself in rather risky fashion, and this renders Volts somewhat defenseless. He tells Phi that even if such was the case, Fabio would have made sure to rough her up while she was there as his slave girl. Phi takes offense to this because Volts is implying that her body is not in demand. Everyone in Fabio's harem hated getting nasty with him. But when Phi saw Selena with our hero, she seemed to be enjoying whatever was happening. Volts argues that love is something that both parties enjoy, but Phi is not sure if such a thing even exists. She does not really care about love, but she does want to know if Volts would be willing to take care of her. Of course, Phi wants the easy way out, but our hero knows that if he says no to her, now then she might end up in the hands of another shady master. Keeping this in mind, he feels that it would be wrong to let Phi end up in the wrong place. With that, he throws her a corn cob and says that he will become her new master. Both Phi and her rabbit jump at the corn cob at the same time and break it into two pieces. They enjoy the snack and Phi states that Volts is a nice man, which is why she would like to tell him something useful. He wants to know what it is, so she reveals that it's the traitor's identity. It's time to go back to the main camp where we learn that the Treasure Sword, Serpent's Dream and Decapitation Flash squads have all left the quest. That's when we see the bald leader X, thanking the other survivors who have decided to stay back despite the obvious risks. However, there is one person who still remains from Decapitation Flash, and it's none other than Phi. X asks her if she is fine with this, and she says yes, after which we also see Volts, L, and Selena right next to her. This implies that Phi has changed squads, but there are other matters at hand. So X talks about making new pair assignments since they are three guilds down. This does not go down well with the others, and they ask for a reason behind this. One of them happens to be Relic who nervously says that he does not wish to work with other people, especially when there is a traitor among them. Levia also raises her hand and says that each of them serves a different purpose over here. She would like to avoid acting out of fear. But this amazes Volts because he never knew that the other people over here had an actual purpose. Levia continues by saying, they should be able to protect themselves as they are adventurers who will take risks only when it makes sense to do so. X sees the sense in this, so he declares that each of the guilds will act as per their own accords. The bald leader can only wish the others good luck. And then we move on to Phi who makes an introduction to Haruto with her rabbit. Of course, he was not expecting to see someone from Fabio's group over here. So he asks what's going on. Volts vouches for her and says that she is a tamer, so she will be able to help them catch the traitors. Haruto gets it, but says that Volts should take care even if that is the case. Our hero says sorry for taking Phi without telling Haruto. But then the slave girl asks him, if he is not going to tell Haruto what they had spoken about the other night. Volt states that he does not want to reveal the traitor's identity to Haruto just yet because the news may upset him. Now, Selena makes an introduction and tells Phi that she will be a great addition to the squad, especially with Treasure Sword no longer in contention. However, Phi continues to stare at Selena, so she asks her if she has something on her face. Of course, Phi is imagining how Selena was when she let go of her modesty with her master. She eventually does respond to Selena, but her gesture is misunderstood. Anyway, Volts asks Phi if she knows where the other guilds are, and she says she is keeping a watch over them via her phoenix bird. Relic and his guild are at the eastern gate as of now, while X and Bale have reached the southern gates. Elle's main interest is Levia and her Sunset's Bond Guild, which consists of her traitor friends, so Phi reveals that they are at the Western Gate. With that, Volts decides that they should get to the Second Gate as soon as they can, and Haruto agrees with him because if they get attacked here, then it will be too narrow to fight back. Elle states that she would like to meet her friends one last time, because she needs closure before they meet their end. On their way, they find tons of goblins, which annoys our hero. 
so he uses his endless sword attack to get rid of them. All it takes is one blow to end all the goblins and everyone looks on in shock and amazement over how powerful Volts is. Now the team continues on their way, and they eventually find the gate, so they cross it instantly. Upon entering, they figure that this is the second gate's area which used to be the dorm area for soldiers in the past. At this very moment, Phi gets an alert from her phoenix, and she informs the others about traitors appearing at the eastern and southern gates. Haruto is shocked to learn that the enemy has appeared in multiple areas, but Volts tells him not to get distracted because they might get attacked over here as well. Just as he says this, the team gets surrounded by the evil shadows and Selina calls out to him. Volts figures what's going on, so he asks Haruto if he recognizes this fog. He is unable to believe what he is seeing because it's the same fog that his buddy Leonardo used to deploy. Our hero instantly realizes that this is the power of a weather master, and then he asks Haruto if Leonardo has joined the quest. Of course, that can't be possible at all, because Leonardo has already passed away. Haruto is struck with grief, and he falls to the ground over the regret of losing his buddy. After all, he too was a victim of the traitors. Now, in order for us to understand what's going, we are taken to a flashback where we see Fi and Volts talking about the traitor. Our hero wanted to confirm if Fi knew about the traitor's identity, but she said that she only knew half. This was obviously a bit confusing for him, so his new slave girl explained that she could not find the traitor's human form. This implied that the traitor could be a monster, but the injuries on the victims all looked as if they were made by a human's job power. Phi said that the power used on the victims was surely that of a job, so it got Volts thinking. If this was the case, then the only logical explanation was that the traitor could be a monster who had the ability to use job powers. However, Phi corrected him by saying she meant to explain that the ones attacking were monsters, but the one pulling the strings from behind was a human. Our hero figured it out and stated that the one with the powers was a human who was then bestowing his powers upon other monsters to do their bidding for him. Phi agreed with his logic and even admitted that the traitor could be a superior tamer than her. However, if the traitor was simply an rank adventurer, then he would only be able to control lower and medium tier monsters. In this case, the ranks of the monsters were higher, which could only mean one thing. Volts then came to the conclusion that the traitor was exactly like him, an S rank adventurer. Now, we are back to the present where the team is still getting covered by the fog and Haruto is losing his will to fight. He feels that since he was the only one who survived the traitor's attacks earlier, it could be that his lost team members are coming back for revenge. Of course, this is not the case, so Vols tells him to get a hold of himself. However, his words fall on deaf ears as Haruto simply asks for his friends to forgive him for his weakness. He is still riddled with guilt as he holds himself responsible for letting all his guild members lose their lives, and the fog continues to grow thicker with each passing second. Soon enough, Volts is not able to see anything in front of him, so he calls out to Haruto and asks him to talk to him. There is no response over there, so our hero calls out to El, Selina, and Phi to see if his slave girls are all right. They all seem to be fine, but the problem is that they can't see anything either. There's no time to waste, so Volts asks El to use her sacred beast of the wind to get rid of the fog. She does as her master says and summons her aerial bird to save the day. The beast gets to work instantly, and as El instructs it, the aerial bird uses a gentle breeze to get rid of the fog while also making sure not to harm any of the other team members. The fog starts to clear soon enough, but Haruto is nowhere to be seen anymore. Volts calls out to him, but then Phi reveals that her Fenrir cat saw Haruto running away in the same direction they came in here. This is fine to our hero, because it would have been a bad idea to let Haruto stay here anyway. Of course, it would be nice to have an animal to keep an eye on Haruto as well so Phi sends her Fenrir cat to do the job. Now that they are in the clear, Volts asks Phi if she could see the man who created the fog in the first place. She reveals that she did manage to catch a glimpse of the culprit, who happened to be an ogre. This is a very powerful monster, 
So Volts wants to know why he would come to attack them like this. Fi reveals that the ogre only came here to see her master's face, because he too is an S-rank fighter. Volts figures that the enemy knows of his identity, even though he has tried to hide himself from the common view. He then asks Fi what's happening with the other guilds, and she explains that they are entering the houses in order to evade the ogre's attack. The sun is setting, and Elle could also need some rest for herself after using the aerial bird, so Volts suggests getting some rest in one of the buildings over here as well. Elle takes this chance to rest her head on her master's body, and she acts as if she is really exhausted. She even asks our hero to carry her. But Selina gets jealous and asks her master to leave Elle as she is. Of course, the princess slave knows that Volts would never leave her alone. But then Fi states that it's a pain to walk so much. She would like to be carried by Volts as well. But both Selina and Elle instantly say no to her. The princess slave even laughs as she says this. So Volts figures that she just wants to have him all to herself, although he also seems to suspect something else. Anyway, the team seeks shelter in one of the buildings, and they stay there till it's night time. We see Elle looking out of the window with seriousness in her eyes, and then she hears someone approaching her. As expected, it's none other than our hero, but Elle is shocked to see her master coming towards her. He says that she does not have to act so stiff in front of him, but this surprises the princess slave. That's when Volts reveals that he could see through Elle's cheerful act in front of Selina and Fi. He knew that she had some kind of darkness around her earlier, so he asks Elle if she is nervous about meeting and confronting the friends who had betrayed her earlier. This makes her emotional, but she maintains that Volts and Selina are with her, so it's a blessed time. However, she reveals that she and Selina had been thinking that after being saved by Volts, they both were rescued and peace was brought back into their lives. However, if their master was to be taken away from them now, then it would be like their worst nightmare coming true. Of course, Volts springs into action and engages in an emotional act with his princess slave. He then tells Elle that he would like to apologize for making her display such a painful expression. Our hero then promises that he would never let Elle be alone, no matter the cost. This makes her very emotional, so she hugs her master once more, but also maintains that if he shows her so much passion, then she will only want to crave him more. She begins to act playfully, which gives our hero some relief as she is finally back to her normal self. They decide to indulge in some friendly behavior and act out their intrusive thoughts, but Volts asks L to keep it down because he does not want to wake up Selina or Fi. L doesn't care about that as she does not mind showing the other slave girls how much she loves her master. After a rather passionate session, L promises that she will definitely come back to her master and her other slave friends, both of whom are shown to be wide awake thanks to the noises from before. She tells Volts once again that she loves him, and the couple embrace once again. The next day arrives, and we can see the phoenix bird flying high up in the sky to watch over the other guilds. It gives Fi the message that these guilds are being attacked by the ogre at the other gates. This alerts the others, especially when Fi mentions that Elle's revenge targets are also being attacked. She goes on to state that the twins Luna and Sana are in danger as well, so Volts does not want to waste any more time. He tells the team it's time to spring into action, and then we shift to Luna and Sana who are in a spot of bother at the southern gate. They panic as they see their own guild member being ended in front of them, and they hold on to each other for support. We then see the massive size of the monsters attacking them, and none of the other fighters are able to match their strength. Things aren't looking good for the twins, and then we shift to the western gate where Elle's targets are also running away from the monsters. They are without their leader Levia, who seems to be the only one who can put up a fight against these monsters, so the cowards can only run for their lives as of now. Kurd is asked to stop the beasts with his magic, so he tries his best to do so. He takes some time to chant a spell, but soon enough, he launches an onslaught of fireballs at the deadly beasts. He is able to land a direct hit, so the team thinks that they have things under control. But that is most definitely not the case, 
as the fireballs could not even leave a scratch on the monsters. One of these beasts lands an attack on Mordred, and he is barely able to defend himself before he falls to the ground. The team is now cornered by the monsters, and it does not look like they are going to make it out of this alive. They panic helplessly as the monsters prepare their finisher moves on them. But just as the final blow is about to be dealt, we hear volts in the background. He unleashes his endless swords on these beasts, and this causes a distraction from the target group. Our hero goes on to fight the monsters in impressive fashion as he shows off all his sword skills. It's one slash after the other for him as Volts takes down multiple monsters without even flinching. His brutal assault leaves no survivors as the ogre monsters lose all their heads and our hero stands in front of the target group looking like an alpha male. Of course, these cowards have never seen anyone as strong as Volts their entire lives so they thank him for saving them from certain doom. Of course our hero did not do this out of the goodness of his heart. And then we hear Elle stepping into the scene. She says that she's glad the monsters didn't get to end her friends because she is the one who is going to do it. The group gets scared when they see Elle in front of them because they had thought she was sold off as a slave girl. Selena and Fi also come to the scene, so the group is very confused. They can't figure how Elle has made it to them over here because she is alive and well. Of course, the princess slave only comments on how long it's been since they've seen each other. She's glad that her fake friends remember who she is, and she asks them to rejoice over their reunion. The group becomes nervous, so they try to act friendly in front of Elle by saying it's a good thing for her to be back. Of course, she does not think of this the same way. So she asks them if this is something to be so casual about. Her words strike fear into their hearts, but Volts can't stick around over here because he also has to save Luna and Sana. He tells Elle that he's leaving for now, so she tells him that she will surely make it back to her master. Selina then steps and says that she will make sure to return Elle to Volts, and even Fi is interested in these cowards, so she also offers to help out the princess slave. With that, Bolts rushes to save Luna and Sana, but also tells his three slave girls that they must return to him. Elle knows that she is not alone anymore, and for the sake of her happiness, she is going to end it all right here, right now. The cowards don't see an out for them, so they try to play nice by asking Elle to hear them out. They even say that they did not intend to betray her, so Elle asks them who it was that gave them the order. That's when she learns that the main villains were Sariella and Misha, who happened to be her sisters, just as she had suspected. Seeing the look on Elle's face makes the cowards feel like they have a chance, so they say that their own families were taken as hostages, so they didn't have any other choice but to do as the sisters told them. They even say it was very hard for them to sell Elle off to the slave merchants, so they ask her to make up with them and let it all be in the past. Of course, she is not going to be fooled so easily, so she mocks the cowards by saying they should definitely make up. Elle proceeds to say that they should all just put their hands together in a round like old times. For that, the cowards will need to drop their weapons, but they don't want to do that because it could be risky for them. They prepare for combat, so Elle mocks them by saying there is no need for weapons if friends are just trying to make up with each other. As expected, all three cowards take fighting stances and get ready for a battle, so Elle declares that she is truly happy to see this. After all, her fake friends decided to be cruel people right till the very end. Now, all the fake friends attack Elle at the same time, because this is their only way out. Elle gets ready to come to terms with what happened to her, and then Selina shows up to protect her from the first strike. She takes on Mordred, who has no idea about her, and then we see Elle summoning her aqua dragon to take on Muslin. Even Fi goes on to attack Kurd, who manages to block her kick with his staff. Now we shift to the fight between Selina and Mordred, which is quite intense. He asks her why she is getting herself involved with Elle, because this should not concern her at all. He tells her to get out of the way, but Selina is not going to back off right now. She says that Elle is her best friend, and she likes to see her smiling so Mordred should be the one to get of the way. Of course, he does not care for such emotions, so he proceeds to attack Selina and says that she is also a slave just like Elle, 
so she should behave like one. His attacks seem to get the better of Selena as she struggles to keep up with his moves at first. Mordred sees an opening, so he unleashes his cross-cut move on Selena and is able to land a strike on her. However, despite getting hit, Selena remembers all the training that Volts gave her and says that even though she is a slave, she is still a human being. Mordred loses his patience, so he tries to attack Selena once again and also tells her to shut up and kneel down like the slave she is. He even goes on to say that both Elle and Selena should be crawling on the ground. This pushes Selena over the edge, and she decides to land a deadly strike right into Mordred's stomach. He is pushed back, and now Selena has the advantage, so she declares that Elle and she will always stand and move forward, so that they can return to their true master Volts. Mordred simply says that Selena is having the dreams of a slave, and he tries to land a finisher blow on her. However, Selena manages to get one over him, and directly strikes Mordred in his chest right through his armor. The coward boy spits out some blood and starts to fear for his life. But this is the end for him. Selena says that if a person hesitates, then he will lose everything, just like how it happened to Mordred. She does not want to lose anyone she cares about, which is why she has emerged as the victor here. Meanwhile, Vi is also fighting Kurd, but the shady wizard does not know why she is against him. She explains that she is only interested in the girls, and not in revenge because she does not see the point of it. Kurd says that if Fi knows this and still wants to fight him, then she is only a fool. She is just the kind of person he hates, which is why he decides to use his magic powers on her. However, he misses his attack as Fi is able to dodge his onslaught. At first, there is only smoke everywhere so Kurd believes that he has blown up the slave girl. However, she shows up from behind him and says that if she could see for herself the use of getting revenge, then she would gladly take the opportunity. Then, she lands a high kick right onto Kurd's chin and gives him a world of pain. He is unable to believe that such a small girl could land such a high kick, so it looks like he might be in trouble now. Despite this, he feels that he has a strong chance to finish her off, so he chants yet another spell and tells Fi that he is going to finish her off now for getting too carried away. The shady wizard unleashes a whole barrage of ice needles onto Fi, but she is not bothered by this. Instead, she states that if revenge can make Elle and Selena feel happy, then even she would like to feel it together with them. The slave girl goes on to unleash her own fighting skills and is able to destroy all the ice needles within a few seconds. She then states that the mutual feeling of happiness with the girls is the main reason why she is fighting Kurt right now. The shady wizard can't believe that Fi was able to crush all of his ice needles, so he wonders what kind of girl she really is. Now, Fi unleashes her phoenix upon Kurd, and that's when he figures that she is a tamer girl. He doesn't know how to counter all the animals that she is going to use on him, but this is not even her main move. Basically, Fi uses her phoenix bird as a distraction and charges from underneath it in order to land a surprise attack on Kurd. The shady wizard figures it out, but it's too late for him because Fi has already reached him. Now she uses her moon wolf attack and lands multiple blows on Kurd at the same time. Now that his body has been weakened, Fi decides to end it all with one final blow, which happens to be her gale breaker attack. All it takes is one direct strike, and she manages to end Kurd with ease as he falls to the ground bleeding right out of his face. Fi signs off by saying, she is not at all interested in Kurd, because he is a worthless person, just like she is now. She bids farewell to her opponent, and that leaves us with Ellen Muslim, who asks the princess slave why she came back after all this time. She simply says that she has not come back here for anything other than to say goodbye to the friends who betrayed her. This situation brings back a lot of memories for Elle, so she thinks about her time as a princess in her kingdom. She was the daughter of the king, which was why she had to meet with a lot of people, even when she was young. Since all of them had fake smiles, she would be very worried about them as it would make her uneasy. Then she found Muslim, Mordred and Kurd, all of whom truly looked like people who would genuinely laugh with her. 
She felt like she could open up to this gang and be real with them. But all of that fell apart when they put the slave collar on her neck and betrayed her. Now, we are back to the present where Muslin unleashes some attacks on Elle. She tries to mock the princess slave by sarcastically saying that she is great to have come here just to say goodbye. She then reveals that she has always hated that extra kind attitude of Elle because it made her feel inferior. The princess slave has to counter Muslin, so she uses her aqua dragon to unleash a water pulse attack. The shady trader is able to dodge this attack, and then she tells Elle that she has been adventuring enough with her team to make a living in the kingdom by herself. By that logic, she does not see herself getting beaten by a princess who is an adventurer for fun. Elle reveals that she never had any ideas of fun when she had joined the team because she simply wanted to grow with Muslin and the others. The Aqua Dragon continues to spray water all over the place, so the traitor girl makes her move, while also admitting that she was always thinking of ways to end Elle. Now, Muslin vanishes from sight. But the princess slave knows that this is a technique known as runaway that allows the user to shorten their distance with super acceleration. Elle figures that if Muslin really intends to take her life, she will probably try to stab her in the heart from behind. After all, a coward will always remain a coward, so Elle even predicts that Muslin will use the Flying Shadow Chronicle attack. The shady trader tries to land an attack on Elle, but since she already knew this was going to happen, Elle uses her Aqua Dragon to attack her from the side. Muslin is just about able to dodge the attack, but she loses some of her clothing in the process. She gets annoyed, so she tries to attack the Aqua Dragon, but this is clearly not a smart choice. The Aqua Dragon unleashes yet another water attack on the Shady Trader and is able to smack her down with ease. Muslin is barely able to recover from this blow, and then L walks up to her with the Aqua Dragon right next to her. She then declares that this is how she is going to bid farewell to Muslin, and it looks like the whole ordeal is finally over for her. However, Muslin says that she can still see the same attitude on the princess slave's face, and she really hates it. Elle on the other hand, comments that Muslin is smiling right now, just as she had done back then. The traitor girl is a bit confused to hear this, but then she learns that Elle is referring to the time she was handed over to the slave merchants. She was trying to ask for help, but Muslin simply kept her mouth shut with her cloak while she kept laughing at her. The shady trader reveals that it was very hard for her to hold back her laughter at the time because she got to see a princess who was always clear in the head, now twisting her face and crying in such a situation. Elle is sad to hear this, but she continues to come closer to Muslin, which is what she wants her to do. She says that the moment Elle comes within her range will be her last, and then she charges at the princess slave with her dagger, still thinking that she has a chance. Of course, the Aqua Dragon is waiting for her and gobbles up Muslin right in front of Elle's eyes. She can still see the traitor girl struggling in the water, so she says that she never asked to be born as a princess. She also does not want to be trapped in her past anymore because she wants to live her life in peace with the people she leaves. This is why she wants Muslin to go away once and for all, and she continues to scream out her wish again and again while the traitor girl drowns till her last breath. Eventually, Elle has to be stopped when Selina puts her hand on her shoulder and reveals that Muslin has been ended. Fi is also right behind Elle, as she witnesses her fake friend's body floating within her aqua dragon. However, if this is the case, then Elle does not know why she is still feeling so sad about it. Meanwhile, we see Volts who is done taking down more monsters. He can sense that Elle must have been done with her revenge by now but then he senses someone rushing towards him. A girl bumps into our hero while saying sorry, so he asks her if she is all right. The girl turns out to be Luna, who is just as shocked to see Volts as he is to see her. Our hero asks Luna where Sarah is, and this causes her to start crying in front of him. She begs him to go help Sarah, which means that she is definitely in some kind of trouble. Now, we move to a flashback where we see both Luna and Sarah in hiding from the monsters. They talk about whether their master Gale will be okay because he had run away and leave them here. 
Luna feels bad because she also ran away and left the knights to deal with the monsters. But Sarah says that her sister's life is more important to her than anything else. She feels that they are better off anyway because she had also promised their mother that she would protect Luna as the older sister, even though there wasn't much of a difference in their age. It was a strong promise. But the problem was Gale, who also happened to be the father of the twins. He would blow up all the quest money on shady women and booze, so Sarah would scold him, but to no avail. Gale only wanted to enjoy himself because it was apparently hard for him to deal with his own wife's health. However, Sarah did not buy into his shady act and simply stated that he was done for. Now we move back to the first flashback where Luna asks Sarah if it was a bad idea to follow their father here. She does not know if there is a right answer to this, but they do need the money to buy medicine for their mom. Suddenly, Sarah can hear a monster growling, so she pushes away Luna to protect her from the attack. That's when the monster strikes the building and Sarah is made to bear the brunt of the damage. The priest girl falls to the floor, and we can see the beasts from before staring at the girls with deadly intent. Luna asks Sarah if she is fine, but she tells her to run away from the scene. After all, the real problem is that the monsters must have already ended the nights if they've made it here. Luna tells Sarah that she is not going anywhere and leaving her sister alone, but she is told that she needs to hurry up while she still can. Sarah is going to fight these monsters as much as she can to buy time for Luna, but this makes her cry. Sarah tells her that she needs to listen to her big sister and get out of here now. After all, no one will be able to take care of their mom if the both of them are ended here. Luna finds it hard to do this, but she eventually leaves and tells Sarah that she will come back with someone to help her, so she needs to just hang in there. Now it's just the priest girl and the monsters, so she kicks things off by attacking them with her light bombing Angel Nova. She lands a direct hit, but it's of no use as the monsters are not affected. Sarah tells them to leave her sister alone, as she is not the type to get her hands dirty. She then calls upon the Holy Light for healing, and says that she is also not that type of girl, but she will still deal with the beasts. The demon beast swings his club at Sarah, and she is able to dodge it, but just barely. She goes on to mock the monsters and says that they will not get anywhere if they are so impatient. Sarah goes ahead with another light bombing attack, but it's of no use as the demon beasts continue to attack her without even letting her finish her chance. Things are not looking good for the priest girl as she is running out of breath and time, but there's not much else that she can do. If even one attack touches her, then she will be done for, and then we see the monsters stomping the ground. Sarah comes to the realization that she is no match for these beasts, so she will just have to accept her fate. At least Luna was able to escape the scene, so Sarah is happy that she was able to stall the monsters if not anything else. As the demon beasts prepare their final attack on her, Sarah calls out to her mom and says that she managed to protect her little sister. She wishes to be praised by her mom, but then she hears someone else saying that she really is a good sister. Sarah knows this voice, and then she sees Volt standing right in front of her in all his glory. As expected, he uses his endless sword attack to stop the monsters with ease, and then he looks back at Sarah as she realizes who her savior is. He is glad to have made it just in the nick of time, and then he pats Sarah on the head for doing a good job. She becomes emotional and holds on to our hero for comfort, after which even Luna makes it and grabs her big sister out of relief. The both of them have countless tears in their eyes because they didn't think they were going to survive this. Of course, Volts has made sure to leave the monsters alive for now because he knows that he can talk to the traitor through them. He calls out to the main villain, and this shocks the monsters. Volts then asks him what his purpose is in harming and ending the lives of innocent people. There is fear in the eyes of these monsters as our hero looks straight into them and says that he will not allow this to carry on any longer. He has had enough of the mess that this traitor has caused, so he is going to be there to see him soon. Volts even says that he is going to chase him down, so he should just sit back and wait for him. In a surprising turn of events, our hero decides to call back his move, 
So he withdraws all the swords from the monster. They are surprised by this move, but since they are being controlled by someone else, they decide to walk away from the scene. Volts observes them and realizes that they are going to the third gate, which means that the traitor is going to be over there inside the castle. He has his own mission to carry out, so he tells Luna and Sarah to wait for El and the others to come and get them. When all of this is over, he wants the sisters to tell him exactly what is going on with them. Luna understands this, and she also asks our hero for his help. Sarah does not want her to trouble Volts any longer, because they do not have any money to pay him for his services. Our hero has no issue in helping the girls, but Sarah says that this attitude is of no good to them. After all, if they take advantage of him once, then they will continue to do so again and again. She wants to compensate Volts for his services, so she asks him to do her that much of a favor. If he does not do this, then she will not be comfortable asking him for help. Luna consoles her sister, and then Volts gets to thinking about what he should take from the girls. He then realizes that there is one thing that he can ask from the girls, so he calls out their names and says that he will make them both his slaves. Of course, this makes Luna become nervous, and even Sarah asks what he means by this. That's when Volts tells them that he is taking away their freedom, so that they can't act recklessly on their own any longer. That will be his compensation for now, and the girls take a moment to consider this offer. Of course, this does turn out to be ideal for them, so Sarah says that she will become our hero's slave girl. She goes on to seal the deal with Volts and asks him to love her as his woman. Of course, her actions make Luna a bit too shy, so she asks Sarah what she is doing. She says that this is what needs to be done in order to become a slave girl, and this makes Luna realize that such actions are needed to make a slave contract. Sarah goes on to explain all the different things that a slave girl will get to do with her master, and this makes Luna very excited. Keeping this in mind, she also decides to become our hero's slave girl and gives him a cute little peck on his cheek. Now that they are done with the contracts, Volt says that they will talk about what to do next when he comes back. The girls are fine with this, but they tell him to promise them that he will come back safe and sound. Volts makes his promise, and then he takes off to deal with the traitor in a rush. As he charges towards his target spot, our hero tells us that no matter how many times he may ask the girls to let him help them, they will not allow it because they would feel bad about it. However, if he binds them as his slaves, then he can protect them as part of his duty. With this out of the way, he now has to focus on getting rid of the main problem, which is the traitor. He follows the trail of blood that was left behind by the ogres due to the injuries he gave them. As expected, this trail leads to the castle, and Volts enters it after which he comes across a staircase that goes up. On top of that, the trail is also going upwards, so the culprit is clearly waiting for our hero. Volts goes up the stairs and soon enough, he reaches the top and comes across a shady figure. Our hero prepares his sword to fight this traitor, but it turns out to be Relic all along. He gives a shady smile and shows a whole bunch of plants that can help relieve stress and anxiety. Of course, now we know what is making Relic so charged up, and he even says that he is not going to hand any of it over to Volts. Our hero realizes everything, but he finds it hard to believe that Relic would risk his own life and take the lives of others just to protect these plants. That's when he figures that Relic is not the man he is after, and then a monster shows up from behind to attack him. Volts is able to dodge the attack, but Relic is not so lucky and he gets chopped off in an instant, even though he is still enjoying the smell of the plants. Now, a girl from behind says that she is glad to see that Volts was able to spot her presence so quickly. Volts takes one look and declares that the traitor all along was none other than Levia, the leader of Sunset's Bond. Now that her identity has been revealed, Levia is asked about her intentions by Volts. She says that she wanted to meet someone like our hero, but this confuses him. He asks if she is interested in him because he is an S-rank hero. But Levia says that her main interest is because Volts is one of God's chosen, who is a leader vessel. This term is not something that Volts is aware of, 
so Levia comments that are limits to what an adventurer can achieve. On top of this, there are only a select few heroes who can achieve S rank. Keeping this in mind, she wants to know how Volts was able to do this. Our hero takes out his holy power stone and says that he simply collected experience with his battle history, and he also threw the power stone into the lake of the gods to give him jobs and make him his rank. Levia makes sense of this statement and states that if the lake of gods can simply give so much power to an adventurer, then the amount of energy in itself must be really high. Levia then says that she will control the lake of the gods and become the most powerful entity in the world. Bolt says that Levia will make an enemy of each and every adventurer if this is the case, but she does not care about this at all. With that, Levia goes on to summon a whole bunch of monsters, and all of them show up in front of Volts. Our hero can see that Levia's main power is to summon monsters, and that's when she reveals her true name to be Heg Arietta, also known as Ari, the leader of the monsters. Basically, Volts sums it up as Ari being the queen of the monsters, but he has other problems in front of him. There are tons of demon beasts in front of him, and Ari asks him if he can really take all of them on with his endless sword attack. Volts wonders if he is being evaluated right now, but Ari says that she is not in the mood to fight him today. She just wanted to talk to him and decides to go home as of now, but our hero is not going to let her leave so easily. He is about to use his endless sword attack, but then the entire monster army comes in front to protect Ari. This confuses Volts because he does not know if Ari is manipulating these monsters or if they are moving on their own because she is like their family. He hesitates because he is unsure of the emotional connection between Ari and the monsters. The queen of the monsters also takes note of this and states that our hero is a kind one. In exchange for his kindness, she decides to give him a reward and drops a bunch of power stones. Volts correctly guesses that these are the power stones of Haruto's comrades from his earlier guild. And then Ari decides to tell him something of use. A massive dragon shows up to become her ride. And then she says that as of this moment, the world of humans and monsters is going to change drastically. Because of this, a man of great power like Volts is sure to be swallowed up in the whirlwind. At that time, he will have to choose which path he has to take to protect the ones he loves. Based on prior experience, it definitely looks like he is going to do this as a leader's vessel. Of course, Volts is still trying to wrap his head around the fact that the world is going to change. But then Ari says that at the epicenter of it all will be her true guilt, which is known as Pandora's demise. With that, she bids farewell to our hero and refers to him as a selfless leader as she flies off into the sky with her dragon. As he sees Ari flying away, our hero is greeted by El and his other harem girls. The princess slave calls out to him and says that she has kept her promise of getting revenge. Volts is pleased to see El in a new light, and he welcomes her back with a smile. She is also delighted to finally be back with her master, so she hugs him out of joy. Of course, there are all the other girls as well who are watching this romantic gesture. And then the skies clear up for the sun to shine brightly upon this new group. The slave girls ask Volts if Ari was actually the traitor all this time, but he says that she is something beyond that now. As a matter of fact, she is their enemy now, which makes the girls wonder what's up. Volts now goes on to explain everything that Ari had told him about wanting to rule the world with the Lake of the Gods, so everyone is worried about her intentions. Keeping this in mind, Selina asks Volts what he's going to do now. He simply says that he only wants to protect the people he cares about, who are the people he loves. This means the entire girl gang consisting of El, Selena, Fi, Luna, and Sarah. El says that such a line is very typical of our hero because of his kindness. Now, he asks if his harem girls will stay by his side and El happily says yes until the end of time. She seals this promise with an affectionate display. But Selena does not like how the princess slave sneakily got herself a nice little session. She decides to get some attention of her own, because even she wants to be with Volts forever. Of course, the other girls are still new to this, so they choose not to do anything shady. Sarah seems to like what she sees, 
but Luna is unable to imagine such love even existing. Fi on the other hand, just calls everyone shady, and then our hero decides to have a word with the sisters. He tells them that they should talk about everything that's bothering them, and there is no need to hold back anymore. They happily say yes, and then Volts tells Fi that she is also welcome to do the same. The tamer girl mainly wants to be fed, so it seems that all is well from the slave girls. However, there's still one more thing to care of, as Haruto is nowhere to be found. Fi uses her tamer skills to locate Haruto inside his tent, so Volts goes to meet him. Haruto is in bad shape, as he apologizes once again for leaving his guild with such a daunting task, and then running away on his own. Volts says sorry as well, because he did let the traitor Ari escape. Haruto says that this is not our hero's fault, so he says that it's also not Haruto's fault using the same logic. He then gives the holy stones that Ari had handed over to him, and this makes Haruto emotional as he recognizes them. Since they belong to his comrades, it's only fair for Haruto to give them a proper send-off in the form of a funeral. He cries and thanks Volts for what he has done, but he says there is no need to mention it. With this, the quest of the Gore AI Fortress's assault has come to an end, although at a great cost. Now, Volts and the girls sit down for a delicious meal, but our hero comments that his family has grown by a lot in just a few days. This means that they will not be able to fit into his house anymore. The girls agree with him, and then he says that if the world is in a state of crisis right now, then it does not make sense to continue the same way as before. After all, he needs to protect what matters to him, so Sarah asks if he wants to go into hiding and operate from the shadows. However, Bolt says no to this idea and says that they can't carry on as adventurers anymore. Fi does not get this because they should be protecting each other, not going out into the open. That's when the tamer girl also says that they simply need to get more members on their side if they are to get the job done. Volts agrees with this logic and says that they must establish a guild first because no one will ever trust them if they are not a recognized body. Sarah is impressed to hear such an idea and she likes the concept of being part of a guild. Luna also says that it would be fun, and explains that the original meaning of guild used to be family. Sarah then suggests making a guild that would be full of slave girls. Of course, such a name would not send the right message, so our hero suggests using a name that is more suited to the general public. As the girls continue to argue over the name, Volt says that as long as a large number of people live in this guild, then no one will be able to steal their peace. L seems to figure out what her master is trying to say, and even he agrees with what she is trying to suggest. He takes a look at the fortress in front of him and states that he is going to build a new kingdom for him and his harem girls right here in this fortress. This does seem like an uphill task, but if you really think about it, this sounds like the perfect plan. With the Battle of Gore AI finally being ended, repairs to the castle and the city went underway right from the moment the completed mission was reported. Things were going well for whoever entered the area and engaged with each other, but the main problem remained the population. Only about 100 adventure citizens had gathered over here in this much time, and we can see that L wants to do other things apart from rebuilding the city. Our hero calls L Shady for luring him away, while everyone else is doing their best to make do with the fortress. The princess slave simply says that she could not help herself as she has not been able to act on her intrusive thoughts with him ever since he became a part of the rebuilding process. Since she has said this, Volts decides to give Elle an extra surprise gift, and she is more than happy to receive it. As she finishes up on her shady intentions, we see Selina entering the room to ask Elle if she has seen Volts anywhere. Of course, she has now walked into a rather intense session. So she asks the princess slave why she is doing such things. She tells her master that the merchants are coming, so he needs to tend to them. But Elle complains that she was about to do the same, so Selina has ruined it all. However, work is important and Selina can't have our hero going into a meeting with a pillar. So she takes care of him to make sure that he has clarity of thought when he is with the merchants. As she walks out of the room, Selina notices Sarah doing her best to clean up the space, 
and she comments on how much she has grown over time. However, Elle walks in and notices that there is something on Selena's lips, so it makes her very upset. Even Sarah wants to know what Selena was doing behind closed doors, but she simply changes the topic. Now the girls discuss the meeting today and wonder if it will go well because everyone else has said no to Volts so far. Luna is shocked to see that their plan would be so hard to enact, but Fi says it makes sense because they don't really have a lot of people right now. Now we shift to the actual meeting between our hero and a merchant who is reading his proposal. He says that these are very rough conditions and explains to Volts that even though he is an S-rank hero, it won't help his case with a merchant. After all, he has to look at the profits, and they don't seem feasible with the current model. He also brings up the point that they need more people, so this meeting does not go too well either. The girls talk about it while making food, and then the meal is laid out for their master. Volts comes to the table, and then Fi asks him if they got rejected again. This is a rather blunt way of speaking, but Volts does not have a problem with it, and says that it's mainly because of their low citizen count. Fi decides to come up with a suggestion, which is that they should try to get people from places that have too many of them. This is a good idea, but Volts does not know where to find such places. That's when Fi reveals that she is from the continent of Shupi Lur, where people have been fighting each other for years. On top of that, there are some people who are just unable to live normal lives in that area. If our hero were to try, then he would be able to save these people and bring them over to his own kingdom. Volt sees sense in this, but then the demon boy Jess appears and says that they need to think this through. As a matter of fact, he has heard that the continent of Shupi Lur is filled with thieves, but Fi says that she had heard the same thing about the people of this land. Our hero is asked what he would like to do in this situation, so he says that he simply wishes to act. His main goal is to secure the future of this country with his own hands, so his entire team is on board for the plan. Jess decides to join forces with Volts and states that they will need a ship if they are to travel to Shupi Lur. He will have it arranged by the next night. And then the reception boy says that he will ask some of the adventurers to protect the country while Volts will be away. Our hero is fine with him taking care of guarding duties, and then Fi says that she will also come along with Volts, because he will need a guide to help him around the place. The ship gets arranged, and it's time for our hero to leave with Fi, so he says goodbye to the other slave girls. Elle and Selina also tell him that they will be waiting for his return, and then Volts takes his leave. What new adventures lie in store for our hero? Will he be able to create a new kingdom with his slave girls? Like, share, and subscribe if you liked this video. Hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload part 4. See you soon.